Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and today we're talking a little bit about Rift of Rygard, the new game by Dunright Games, and why it's likely going to be a very fun game for Clash of Clans players, and even more specifically, Clash of Clans players that enjoy clan wars and the more competitive aspects of the game. Now, there's a lot of information out there on Rift of Rygard. You can check out uh, Judo Sloth, Echo Gaming, and Clash Bashing, I believe, for details on all the different game modes. So I'm not going to uh, put out too much information considering it's already been covered. I'm just going to cover a few specific details that I think are very encouraging, nice to see, that are in this new game, and why that's going to uh, bode well for Clash of Clans players. Now, before I get into those details, I want to give a quick shout out to their Kickstarter campaign. This is a way that you guys, um, community members within the gaming community, can donate uh, to the game and also get a lot of cool perks in return. This will help the game uh, get finished developing and help it uh, come out sooner, as well as it'll get you guys these cool perks you can see. Um, and one of the, the best things about this Kickstarter campaign is that Every dollar you donate to the campaign, you'll get back in in-game currency. So if you know yourself, if you know that you tend to spend money here and there, uh, you can admit it, on mobile games, on Clash of Clans perhaps, then you might want to consider doing this because if you're going to spend money anyway, you might as well get these cool additional perks such as access to the beta of the game, getting early access, being able to be one of the testers. To, to give feedback, stuff like that, as well as perks at lower levels, such as in-game skins that only Kickstarter campaign donators will be able to have. Um, and any, anyone who sees you in-game will know this was one of the guys that was in there early and uh, got the game going off the ground. So there's some very cool perks, and of course it seems to all be worth it if you plan on spending money anyway, because you're getting that money back in in-game currency. So be sure to check that out. There's only like two days left in the campaign. I want to give one more shout out to it. Um, a lot of people have already donated, but there's uh, still a ton of cool perks you can get. So check that out. Link is in the description. Now, getting to the topic of the video, I have five things that I think are very good for Clash of Clans players that enjoy clan wars and the competitive side of the game to see being implemented in done right games. And one of the common themes you guys will notice with these is that they all relate to, it's almost like Clash of Clans in hindsight. If there were these things that you could change about the game that would make it better and more enjoyable, that's what's being implemented in Rift of Rygard. So it's a few different things where it's like, yes, I, I always wanted this to be in Clash of Clans, or yeah, this makes the game that much better. And the first one is relatively simple, but Jake has said it before, there's going to be a single currency in the game. So there's not gold, elixir, dark elixir, there's just gold. And I think it's not a huge thing, but it is, it's nice, at least for me, knowing that it's going to simplify the economics of the game so much. And it's always so frustrating to have a full elixir storage at some town hall level, but you're still trying to get gold. Actually, more often you have full uh, gold and elixir, and you're trying to get dark elixir to upgrade your heroes. So single currency is going to make it a lot more um, simple in terms of upgrading, and you're not going to be in those frustrating situations. The second one is there's no cook time for an army, and there's no cost for an army, so you don't have to worry about funding an actual attack. Um, you can basically go with whatever your strongest army, whatever your army of choice is, um, and there's nothing to deter you, such as a long troop time or a long uh, or an expensive army cost. And like back in Clash of Clans, towards the beginning, it took like 45 minutes to cook a single golem in one of your dark barracks. It was insane. It's gotten much better, I will say. But this is another thing that just makes it that much more enjoyable. And there's no real reason except to kind of get people to buy gems to kind of you know fast forward and uh, get their army cooked faster. So it is a good business model, perhaps. But it's nice to see that in, in Rift of Rygard, that's not going to be the case. Now, this third one is probably the my favorite of, of these five that I'm sharing with you today. It is that they're separating the competitive from the non-competitive. So there's four game modes that we know of uh, that will be implemented from the start, and two of them are competitive. You have tournaments, uh, single-player tournaments individually, um, as well as these guild wars where 
uh, your guild can challenge other guilds and be in these leagues. Um, like I said, more details can be found in these actual videos on other YouTubers' channels that kind of go over all this. But there's these two competitive game modes, and then there's two game modes that are just completely for fun slash uh, to upgrade your base. And by that I mean we have the farming game mode, which is there's no trophies involved like Clash of Clans. It's just about getting gold. So that is completely separate. Um, from the competitive modes, as well as the story mode, which is um, an offline mode, which is something that I like seeing because if you're on an airplane, if you don't have access to Wi-Fi or data, you can still play the game and have some fun, as well as people that enjoy the story aspect of a game. Uh, there's that dimension of it as well. But the war, um, the guild wars and the tournaments are completely separate, which is nice because for people that want to be involved in it, it's clear what's competitive and what's not. And if you want, you can focus on those two game modes that allow you to have that competitive aspect. So that's very cool to see. It's, it's something that we knew was going to happen with Jake being um, a big figure in the war community and the competitive Clash of Clans community. Um, we knew this was going to be something they wanted to focus on. And right away, we have two game modes that look like they're going to be a ton of fun for people trying to be competitive and have that competitive feel within a mobile game. Um, the fourth one is also very nice to see, especially for some people who I know have always hated this in Clash of Clans, is the cheating, the engineering. That's not going to be possible right from the get-go in uh, Rift of Rygard. Basically, the Town Hall equivalent is called a core. You have different core levels. And to upgrade to the next core, you have to have everything um, within one level of being maxed. That's going to prevent like you from rushing too much in your your base. And also, all the matchmaking looks like it's based on core. So you're not going to get an advantage by doing what some people do in Clash of Clans, which is upgrading all your offense but leaving a really low-level defense. That's not going to be the case. So it's very evil, even level playing field, as well as the ranking system is based on core level. So think of Clash Royale for a second. Um, one of the things that's frustrating about it is if you're only like level 9 or level 10, you can never be a top player because your, your cards just aren't upgraded well enough. And the same kind of applies to Clash of Clans. You have to have a good base to be able to, in a good like army comp level, to be able to compete at a high level in Clash of Clans. So this way you can be the best of a very low level core, doesn't require a lot except skill. And that's what you want to isolate. And it looks like that's what they're trying to do is isolate skill not people who have the resources to um, spend a lot of time or to put a lot of money into their base, which is nice to see. Um, there's also not going to be um, modding, it looks like, because you can scout the base for like two to five minutes or something ahead of time. I think it's five minutes. So that's it. There's no actual scouting like there is in Clash of Clans and Clan Wars where you can scout for an entire like hours during the war. You hit attack, then you scout, which is kind of a an interesting feature, but it's nice to see in that people won't be able to like download a base and then practice it in some kind of weird uh, file in which the, the game is the same and they can just sandbox the attacks until they get it perfect. So it is nice in that sense, as well as you, the planning is kind of instantaneous. You only have five minutes. You got to plan right away. It's different than Clash of Clans where you might have to spend you know three hours playing an attack if it's that important. You're not going to waste too much time, too much of your life, where you st but you still have the aspect of um, the most skilled player is going to gonna prevail. So that's very cool to see. And the fifth one is that, quite simply, this is a very accessible game. The creators of the game, uh, they had, there's a Discord, I'll, I'll link that in the description as well. There's a Discord where you can ask questions, chat with other players. It's very integrated between the creators and the players. And that's something that they stressed at the beginning they want to have in their company, um, especially with uh, the way Clash of Clans sometimes has felt like there's been a disconnect in the past. It's gotten a lot better, but at, at times it felt like there was a big disconnect between the uh, developers and the people that played the game. So that's another great thing to see that's in, in uh, Rift of Rygard, and it will allow a lot of changes to be made at the bottom level at the grassroots level and then to kind of trickle up to the actual creators and the developers who can make the changes that players want to see. Um, but that's all for me guys. I hope you enjoyed these five 
Um, these five reasons that I think Rift of Rygard is going to be a great game for Clash of Clans players, and I look forward to seeing it come out in beta. You guys will probably see it on the channel, and it should be uh, a fun mobile game, I'm hoping. So that all being said, check the links in the description for Kickstarter and Discord, and I will see you guys later. Bisectatron out.